guys, how you doing? It's Henry at Mowers and Blowers. Welcome to another weekend product review. I recently received this in the mail. It's a, it's a Top Don RD Battery 101. This is a battery tester. It says it's a battery tester, a crank tester, and a charging tester. You don't really need a battery tester so much because you have a multimeter that's handy all the time, you know, and that measures exactly how many volts the battery is giving out. What you need is a load tester, and this doesn't say load tester, but it does say crank tester. So would you actually have to crank it for you to get that test, you know? Anyway, I'll open it right now. I have a, a load tester, right? And I thought this is what that was. It has instructions in here, which I never look at. Uh, you can always figure it out, but this does seem like it's pretty easy to use. You've got your positive and your negative alligator clips for your battery just to connect onto it. And when you get to it, you, uh, you can see that there's an OK button, an up and down button, and a return or refresh button. There is no other buttons here. It's uh, plastic encased, has a 2.4 inch black and white LCD liquid crystal display over here. And uh, the rest is plastic. Let's press the OK button for three seconds because that's usually what happens to turn it on, but nothing's happening. Maybe I'll press it fast. Nope. Press this, press that, press this. <laughs> Maybe I should read the instructions, huh? So uh, I can't find any on and off switch for the display, and I don't even see any battery compartments as to where you would put a battery. So people will probably be saying right now, well, Henry, it doesn't need a battery. You have to connect the alligator clips to a battery so that you get the display. Well, what if the battery is stone cold dead? You can't test it because there's no current going to it, right? Only one way to find out. Let's check it out and test it. Okay, first thing we got over here is this uh, <laughs> 12 volt battery that was in one of those jump starters, you know, jumper packs. Uh, I found it on the street, so I know it's dead, right? I picked it up only because it could be used as a battery core exchange for a battery purchase. But either way, it might have enough juice to light up the display. We're gonna put the alligator clips on positive and negative, and let's see if we get a display here. I don't see any display that's on. It is connected to a battery. Let's press okay, nothing. Press okay for three seconds, nothing. Press that down, nothing. Press that, nothing. Press that, nothing. Press two at the same time for three seconds. Nothing. Press too fast. So, so far we can't even turn this thing on. Next we have a brand new EverStart battery, never used. Got it from Walmart, brand new. 12 volts. Let's uh, connect negative to negative. Positive to positive. Aha! Look at that. We get a display now. It says top done battery tester. Let's press OK. And then we have a choice of, uh, let's see, number one battery test, number two cranking test, number three charging test, review data, five for language, and six and about. Well, let's do a battery test, okay? It's on number one battery test. Let's press OK. Regular flooded AGM flat plate, AGM spiral gel EFB. I think it's a regular flooded, so we'll just press OK. CCA. Yep, let's find CCA. Press. Testing. Do, 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 do. It's not making a noise. I'm making that noise. But I think you know that I'm making that noise. Testing, testing. Okay, here we go. Ooh, that's interesting. Healthy, 20%, 225 CCA. Well, this is a 230, so that's close. Charge, 65%, 12.39 er volts. Internal, R equals 13.33 M ohms. Rated 500 CCA. It says replace. <laughs> that's terrible. All right, let's return to the other menu. And let's do a cranking test. Let's see if that works without actually cranking it. Start engine, yeah. So it's asking me to start an engine, which it's not connected to. So we can't do a charging test right now with this. 
It's return. And it won't let me return. So I uh, disconnected the battery again, put it back on here, and that's that first screen, right, with top done. It actually tells you what it is right now. It's 12.37, so it's correct because 12.37 is just a smidgen below 12.4, and you're going to need 12.4 at least to crank an engine. So this does need to uh, be recharged, even though it did say replace, but the health was 20%. So I think if we just recharge this battery up, the, the health would be good and uh, you wouldn't need it. But uh, we I'd like to try a, a cranking test. So I'm going to bring this to the backyard where I have a tractor with a battery in it and we could try that. In the meantime, while we're doing that, I might as well plug in my uh, Top Done Tornado 1200 made by the same manufacturer, Top Done, right? Might as well use this to try to um, charge it, you know. This is a regular battery, not an AGM battery or anything like that. And uh, it shows that it's charging here and it's at least 50% full. So we'll just charge this all the way to 100 and that battery should be good. In the meantime, let's go check the, let's go try a cranking test with this thing. Here in the back, we have a tractor that's been winterized already, meaning that I've already shut the fuel shut off on and ran the engine until all the gas has been depleted from the carburetor so i don't want to restart it again and, and and flood that i just want to try this uh quick so that at least i know i can crank a battery you know what i mean so the top done is on here and it shows 3.38 which is not strong enough uh it's been very cold here on the east coast so as you guys know with uh cold weather it really drains a battery so I'm just going to crank it and see what happens. 12.37 right now. So it does crank, as you can see. And then I'll press the OK button to get to the first part, battery test. Second is cranking test. We're going to do OK. It says start engine. So let's just crank it. RPM detected. That's all it says. Um, so we're not going to be able to do a cranking test because this battery is not strong enough to turn completely, you know? Okay, so uh, I cranked it and did it okay, and it says time, three, 346 milliseconds. Voltage is 8.1 volts in a crank, so it shows cranking low. That's obvious. So obviously this battery needs to be uh, recharged. So you know what? It does what it needs to do. So that's a nifty little device, huh? It's very accurate in terms of the numbers, too. I have a load tester, but it's just gauges and stuff, and it's not exactly precise. You know, but uh, this being very precise is, is very useful. So it's good to carry around, uh, especially for mechanics when you deal with voltage and all that stuff with batteries. Uh, the only bad thing I would say about it is that if you had a dead battery that was healthy, if it just ran out of juice, you know, you couldn't test it with this because it doesn't have an enclosed battery to give you a reading. You have to have some juice left in the battery for this to even work. It could be a perfectly good brand new battery, just hasn't been used for a long, long time, and the battery's dead. You wouldn't be able to test that unless you recharged it, you know what I mean? So that's the only bad thing I would say about it. But uh, I guess that's with all battery testers too. Um, except for like a multimeter, because if you had a multimeter that's self-powered, right? You can test a dead battery and see exactly how much, even though it may not show up on a reading, right? Uh, a multimeter, you'd probably get at least 0, 0 0.01, you know what I mean? You could see that it's completely dead. So I would think that a multimeter would be better than this, but this is more precise in terms of cranking test and battery test, whether or not you need it to replace and it. And it measures it very precisely, you know? So uh, I'll leave a link in the description if you guys are interested in getting one from Top Done. This is a battery uh, tester and uh, crank tester. Thanks a lot for joining me on today's product review. We'll see you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. See you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. Hey, I'm Henry from Mowers and Blowers. As a YouTuber that deals with small engine equipment on a daily basis, I worry about the harmful effects of the 10% ethanol that's in your unleaded gas from your gas station here on the East Coast. As winter nears, I think about storing my summer lawn equipment for the winter. Ethanol 
absorbs moisture. And what it does is it could rust or corrode and clog up your jets in your carburetor. That's why I use Ethanol Safeguard with stabilizers from my friends over at Lucas Oil Products. Before you store your machines, a little bit of Lucas goes a long way. When you're ready to use your machines again, Hey, if you guys enjoyed the video, remember to give me a like. Also, comment below. Subscribe. Remember, it doesn't cost anything to subscribe. It's free, right? Also, hit that little bell. That way you'll get post notifications whenever there's a new video and you won't miss out on any of them. Remember to follow my Instagram and Facebook, as well as if you'd like to donate a dollar or two, paypal.me slash mowers and blowers. Really appreciate all the support. Also, to keep the videos coming every day, support the channel. Bye.